Previously, on Life of a PT, I did a six week cut. The reason why the cut was not longer because my wife and I had a trip to Japan and Taiwan at the end of October. I was not going to be dieting on this trip. Hi, I'm Jeffrey, physical therapist, and welcome to Life of a PT. This episode, I will be talking about my travel experience in Japan. We rode Eva Air to Japan and the Asian airlines always have pretty good food. One meal we had kanji with fish floss, which is a pretty typical breakfast in Taiwan. We planned to be in Japan for six days and it was split between Kyoto and Tokyo. Japan's railway system can be a little daunting, especially if you've never done it before. But luckily, uh, we had my wife and Hai to figure it out. Our first night in Kyoto, we had Ichiran ramen. And funny enough, our last meal in Japan was Ipudo, the other popular ramen chain. I thought they were both great, but I would give the edge to Ichiran. In Kyoto, we stayed at the Mitsui Garden Hotel, and it was very nice, spacious, and convenient. The breakfast they offered at the hotel was amazing and we ate it almost every morning. I love the bento style in Japan because you get to try a variety of food and this one had really fresh sashimi and tempura. 10 out of 10, one of the best meals for me in Japan. We were walking distance to many markets and we explored the different shops and ate a lot of street food. We found a shop called Ringgram, which you could make your own rings from scratch. It was my wife and I's one year wedding anniversary, so we kind of celebrated with that cool experience. And I'm actually wearing a ring right now. And this is the one that I made. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's a little beveled. And that's where we hammered for the pattern. We tried all kinds of food at the Nishiki market. There was this honey shop called Sugi B. They sold honey that you can put on yogurt, fruits, mix it with water and drink it. They had samples of the honey water and it was so good. And they also sold ice cream which is delicious as well. One dinner, we had gyukatsu, which is Japanese steak with breadcrumbs on the outside. It definitely looked better than it tasted. I give it like a seven out of 10. Second day in Kyoto, we had a tea ceremony experience with rented kimonos. We got to make Japanese dessert and matcha while learning about some of the history of tea ceremonies in Japan. Third day, we went to Arashiyama Bamboo Grove, which is a popular tourist location in Kyoto. So we tried to get there early. Then we headed to Katsura River and the atmosphere by the river was great. And uh, the views were amazing. It was just very crowded in some areas. You were like shoulder to shoulder with everybody. We tried the famous coffee shop nearby with the percent symbol. And I, I don't really drink coffee. So I drank a lemonade instead and it was surprisingly good. We got to Fushimi Inari Taisha right before sunset and got to walk the trails a little bit and see all the red shrines. Later that night, we ate dinner at a little restaurant that had uh, okonomiyaki, which is a Japanese savory pancake, and they cook it in front of you. The next day, we headed to Tokyo from Kyoto on the train, and we picked up bento boxes along the way to try. They were okay, below expectations. We stayed in Ginza, and the first full day in Tokyo, we went to Sensoji Temple, which is very crowded. We got lunch at a ramen place called Afuri, and they had uh, ramen in yuzu broth, and it was pretty good. You can really taste the yuzu. 
In the afternoon, we went to Meiji Jingu Shrine and we really enjoyed it. The area was less crowded, peaceful, and full of greenery. We then went to the famous Shibuya Crossing and shopped around there. We saw the Hachiko statue of the loyal dog that would uh, wait for its owner in that same spot even after like nine years after the owner has passed. We all need that kind of loyalty in our lives, for real. I also saw a cool 3D panda billboard uh, on one of the buildings. Next day, we went to the Tsukiji Market, which was apparently one of the original fish markets. It wasn't as big as I would have thought. We tried some raw fish, of course, and scallop on a stick. It was all very fresh. On the outer markets, we ate more food, including this A5 Wagyu on a stick. This is one of the highlights of the trip. I've dreamed of eating A5 Wagyu in Japan, and this exceeded my expectations. The meat literally melted in my mouth, 12 out of 10. We went to the biggest Uniqlo in Ginza. There was like 12 floors of clothing, crazy. Last dinner in Tokyo, we ate at a mall and we had eel and it was 10 out of 10. I don't even like eel, but man, the meat was so tender and you don't even taste like the little bones, anything hard. Even though we walk like 20,000 steps every day in Japan, I was still itching to go to the gym. So I found time to work out at a Gold's Gym in Tokyo. It was about $10 for a day pass and you had to bring your own indoor shoes to work out in, uh, which is interesting. So I think it's to keep the, the gym as clean as possible. The machines were all very close and I felt very crammed. I got a souvenir shirt from there. Kind of cool. One thing I didn't expect in Japan was how crowded some places were. And granted, we did choose to go to the popular tourist areas. It was crowded with people in general though, not just tourists. People in Japan were generally very nice and respectful, but I noticed in Kyoto, they were extra nice and they had excellent service compared to Tokyo. One of the Japanese writing systems has adapted Chinese characters. So I could actually read some Japanese, but they were pronounced differently. Overall, Japan was an amazing time with great company. I would definitely go back, but probably to different prefectures and experience more of the countryside and areas that were less crowded. Hope you guys enjoyed the Japan recap and thanks for watching and click here to watch my last video where I talk about my six week cut.